What would you say, what were your, your first feelings, you know, when you got, when you joined up here? You know, I was a little nervous when I first uh, started working here also because, you know, everyone walks around real professional, uh, you know, stone face. They have their job to do. There's a level of professionalism that they maintain, you know, during the day. And, uh, but, you know, when we're off shift and we're just hanging out with each other, it's just different. And like you said, the camaraderie, you know, we're all just good pals. We hang out and, you know, BS around at night. It's pretty cool. All right. Yeah, I noticed you guys got like a little, uh a little habit or whatever we were all kicking yeah, back Yeah, we outside. like to, you know, throw some chairs out here on the front or just, you know, stand around and uh, wave at all the cars that go by, talk to the new people that go by. We like to bring people in, like John said, um, show, them, show them around the truck, let them check it out. And teaching people, you know, you see us in elementary schools telling kids to stop, drop, and roll, how to put themselves out if they're on fire. Yeah, does that really work? I mean, seriously, if, if they're on fire and they stop and they drop and they roll, the that fire's out? It works. It's out. Okay, wow. You know, because I was thinking, like, what if they were covered with oil? You know, seriously, they're going to stay on fire. Well, when you roll, you put the fire on the ground and it takes away the oxygen from the fire. But don't you think maybe you should suggest to kids, like, hey, kids, um, don't cover yourself in oil and get on fire. Because, you know, that might not even, the stop, drop, and roll thing might not even help you in that situation. I think that comes on the parent side. We'll tell them not to bathe their kids in oil anymore. Bathe their kids in oil. That's, yeah, that's true. It's we like to maintain a good image with the public. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed it's that you get a lot of people come by here and they're honking their horns and, hey, oh, yeah. guys, what's going on? Let's, work. Let's drink some beer. <laughs> what do you do here at the fire department? Uh, we fight fires and we provide EMS service for anyone who needs it in our area. Uh, okay, and it, what I guess I was specifically getting at is what, what do you do here? Because I've been walking around and I was just curious. John Kreidger is awesome. I see him every day sitting in the lawn in front of the fire department doing absolutely nothing. He's awesome. <laughs> okay, we got Paz on the spot. We're here at NMSU campus. We're asking people what they think of the NMSU fire department. Do you, th do you think they're cool? All I know is they set off their sirens randomly throughout the day. What do you think of the fire department? I think they're awesome. Oh, that's it? Just awesome. Oh, they're yeah, awesome. Yeah, they save kitties from trees. <laughs> oh, you don't have time? Come on. They're oh, hot. yeah. I can tell you. Let me tell you. You, th you think? Guys. <laughs> they're awesome. NMSU fire department is just wonderful. Are you, you like firemen? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Hot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Darn tootin' they're hot, they're running around through flames and things. I guess the hey. uniform? It's the uniform. Yeah. What is it about the uniform? Um, I like the colors, it's all blue. Okay. So. They got a lot of yellow on there too, so you can see them though. Yeah. yeah. Is that okay? Does that, does that clash or something? No. No? It's no. alright? Yeah. It's okay. My name's really hard. Okay. How hard is it? Really, really hard. Well, let's hear it and see if I can say um, it. My name is Achie Schouten, it's spelled A-A-G-J-E-S-C-H-O-U-T-E-N. Alright, say it one more time. Achia Schouten. Achia Schouten? Yeah. It's very pretty. Where's that from? Holland. If I were ever in trouble, I'd want the NMSU Fire Department to rescue me. We're here with Captain Chris Sloman, and he's going to explain to us a few things that we can do to make ourselves a little more prepared and safe in the event of a fire. Well, when it comes to fire prevention, we're looking at our, our public education. We're really looking at three things. Prevention, protection, and points we want people to remember when an emergency takes place. Prevention, we're looking for one, people to take responsibility um, for preventing fires, doing things like not overloading electrical outlets, um, being careful with halogen lamps, space heaters, um, not using candles or being careful with using candles, um, being careful with smoking materials, a lot of common sense stuff that most people take for granted. The second thing we try and emphasize is protecting against fires. Um, things like checking your smoke alarms once a month, changing the batteries in your smoke detectors every time we change the clocks for daylight and standard time. Uh, what are some of the things that, that you know you as a firefighter suggest to the public and in, in terms of public safety, in terms of being more fire conscious? Well, lots of things that we do. We, we do lots of fire prevention things like teaching people how to use fire extinguishers and teaching people when they need to change batteries on their smoke detectors. But so as a firefighter, you know, just, you know, faith aside, you go ahead and you recommend people go ahead and have lightning rods. Uh, yeah, lightning rods, rubber floors, anything to prevent getting electrocuted. You Absolutely. really, you really take firefighting seriously. You know, me and Jed have been training this last week with yes, uh, your department. Have yes, we been sir. doing okay? For probies, you've been doing great. For probies, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, uh, and that's not degrading in any sense, I hope, you know. Sure, yeah. What, what, could you tell us what, what exactly is a probie? A probie is a, you know, pet name we have for probationary firefighter, actually. And, uh. You know, we just shortened it up. It's been a tradition in the fire service, that's why we use it. Although Jed and Red never had to jump from the engine and rush into a fiery building,
They did participate in a training exercise that simulated entering a smoke-filled room in a search and rescue mission. During the exercises, there was no glamour or fame, just crushing mental and physical pressure. The equipment is real, the suits are real, and the demand to perform is as intense as the heat that builds up within the protective suit of the firefighter. Here, Student firefighters struggle in simulated life and death decisions that impact not only their lives, but the lives of their fellow firefighters and the public at large. Red! Red! Hey, big guy. Wow, am I tired. Man, being a firefighter is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. So how did you think we did? Well, you did real well, and Jed was astounding. He showed he really has what it takes to be a firefighter. And me? What about me? How did I do? Did I, did I have what it takes? Well, Red, you definitely have what it takes to make me laugh. I mean, the invisible monkey and the popping fireman. Where do you come up with this stuff? You had me rolling. I haven't laughed like that in a millennium. I'd sure like to see some of that again. Well, it is the end of the show, so maybe I can throw a little something something in the mix for you. Check this out. What if you could explore your surroundings with real hands-on experience? Not just observing the events and activities around you, but to become part of them. To know what it's like to be an actor in the play or a kickboxer in the ring. Would you do it? Would you have what it takes?